6 a.m. It's raining. We're gonna hop in the Veloster, get over to Till Auto Detailing so he can finish detailing it. Ceramic coating's holding up super well. Car looks wonderful. It's self-cleaning for the most part, but the interior still needs done. Till Auto Detailing picked me up at 6.30 in the morning to take me to the airport like a boss. Almost to the airport, time for some wake up juice. Liquid ice, link in the description below. Thomas, I heard you just detailed Patrick's Aventador. First Aventador I've ever detailed, now I want one. You drove it home? I did. I saw your video saying we deliver. We do, del <laughs> we do deliver, if you have an exotic, we deliver for free. Uh oh. And no delivery fees. I'm gonna expect that Veloster delivered back to my house. No delivery fees. See, that's the most exotic car I've ever detailed. It's got at life. least a V16 in it. At least. Could be a V18. Maybe even, is it is it twin turbo or triple turbo? Yep, Gallo 24. Thanks, Thomas. Have a good day. You too, bro. Can't have this here, better color. <laughs> Perfect. TSA Pre is like the best hundred dollars you could ever spend. Look at that line. Our line has two people. Never doubt full send. They indicated that they thought the ground stop would continue for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, after a thousand delays, I'm in Dallas and they pushed our flight back to 11.38, it's 11.06, and I'm still in the wrong terminal. So hopefully we can pull this off. What is going on guys? I'm watching JR going today. We are here in Tennessee to pick up a car. But first, we have to hop in something that's crazy. No Ubering today. We are getting in a very special car. Rolling up right now. What's going on? Brady? Yep, nice to meet you, dude. Me too. I was like, this literally is the uh, the one that rolls, isn't it? I think so. Ugh. I was about to say, I, uh, I dropped it in like first yesterday when I do a U-turn and uh -huh. uh, I spun it around and I'm like, I, I mean, it's the Exploder. We might roll over, <laughs> so it suits the car. I'm putting on my anti-rollover device here. Oh, the seat belt. Yeah, that's it. 117,000 miles? Yes. So low. Look at this, guys. Have you ever seen a manual Exploder? Probably All not. stock. Super cool. It's got a manual and then electronic four wheel drive switch in. That's awesome. Today, we are here with my newest car. And of course, you just saw us fly all the way to Tennessee just to pick this up. This is the cheapest Fiat 500 Abarth in the nation. Clean title, 121,000 miles, and it's got a big turbo, catalyst downpipe. I mean, a stock turbo, but it sounds like it has a big turbo. And uh, dual exhaust all the way back. Super fun, aftermarket shifter. We're gonna go have some fun with this car. So I'm gonna take you around it and uh, show you all there is to know about the Fiat 500 Abarth, and then we're gonna go drive it. So the Fiat 500 model line is super convoluted. There's the Easy, the Sport, the Pop. There used to be a Turbo, now they're all turboed. And then there's this, the Abarth, which is the king of the Fiat 500s. You get the Turbo, it always had the Turbo. You get the Abarth stripes, red mirrors, Abarth wheels, you get Scorpion center caps, Scorpions on the side, Scorpions on the back, Scorpions, no, just kidding. Lots of Scorpions though, there's one on the steering wheel. You get these special red seats in the Abarth. It's got aluminum covers on the pedals down there. Five-speed transmission, tiny 16-inch wheels. The tires are 195s, super small. We've got some Chinese Antares on here. Cheap tires, but hey, it's a small car. It changes direction easily, it doesn't weigh a lot. You can actually kind of get away with a cheap tire on this. Under the hood, we have the 1.4 liter multi-air. Here's that glorious multi-air 1.4 liter engine. Look at the turbo just right there in your face. We've got this madness silicon intake right there that's been fabbed up with a K&N filter hiding back there. 
And uh, that's really about all there is to this. Some simple mods, and you will not believe the glorious noises this car makes. Massive pops when it comes off throttle, and it sounds so good. And the turbo sounds are huge. Everything about this sounds like it could be five times the size that this car is. This 500 owes its amazing stance to a set of H&R lowering springs, and it has Kony FSDs. This has so many awesome little performance parts on it that you just wouldn't expect. And of course, it's you know about the size of your average four-wheeler these days, and way faster. Time for a cold start. Anyway, check out this awesome gauge cluster. Speedometer on the outside, tack on the inside. You can see that right there. There's a boost gauge right there with a gear shift indicator. It just says shift up when it's time to shift. Uh, of course, we've got a check engine light, catalyst downpipe. Uh, and there's no sunroof in this base model. It has the Bose audio, not the Beats audio. You could also get the Abarth in the convertible. Think. And this definitely is not the convertible. That's a good thing, I think. I don't want to replace the top, and it just looks better. Uh, so, coming through the dash, we've got the radio controls right there. Very simple. Sport button. Oh, yeah. Wait. Okay, the sport's on now. I heard the exhaust open up, and it sounded pretty nasty there. Uh, we've got some hazards. Defrost, simple climate controls, traction off and the window controls. The shifter is from Craven Speed, and you actually have some steering wheel controls here to make your life easy. Cruise control, some audio controls right there, and then mirror controls, and that's basically the entire interior. The back seat's been taken out, got a little delete back there. Let's go drive this. All right, so this is Brady. I'm buying the car from him, and he happens to live basically at the tail of the dragon. So how'd you end up with this car? So I was really looking for a 500 car, I really couldn't find one um, around here locally, so I got on Craigslist and I found one that had some questionable modifications at first. The car um, originally had a really bad 3NM Scorpion on the hood, and it had a, it wasn't even a nightshade, it was a spray painted uh, oh, no. fog lights, and not fog lights, but the running lights and the headlights. So over the course of the first six months of ownership, I spent more time actually bringing the car to stock, so as he's buying it, it's stocker than I actually bought it. I can tell that you can see yeah. the headlights have been like polished out. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. yeah, but I bought the car for $7,800 back in uh, December 2017. Yeah, okay. It's been great ever since, and we're at 120,000 miles right now, so yeah. definitely have driven it. A lot of these cars only have 20,000 miles, so I mean, most of the guys I run into who own them, they're, they're frankly impressed not only since it's Italian, but, but it has high miles. But it has high miles for an Italian car. Yeah. And this is frankly low mileage for one of these. Uh, I have friends who have them that have like, I think there's a guy out of California, he's at 170, 180,000 miles on one of these. Wow. There's a non turbo cars with 300, 400,000 miles. Huh. Yeah. They're pretty reliable for, you know, Italian cars. No Although, uh, it's sort mostly of Italian parts car. Been, right, right. Parts have been special <laughs> from. FCA. It's like this, but with an American flag. Yeah. Uh, Tony happened to, uh, let's just say, Tony's no longer from Italy. I think uh, <laughs> I think these cars are built in Mexico. Oh, it, it is built in Mexico, yeah, isn't car, it? I think we actually have our uh, annual Fiat Amen up here, yeah. the Alps and the Dragon. Now next year, <laughs> next year it's going to be Fiat Freak Out on the Dragon, and um, we have a lot of cars that generally come through here, probably about a group of 100 to 120 cars, give or take, of uh, Alfa Romeos and uh, Fiat's and basically nice. anything Italian. So yeah, yeah. it's fun to uh, rip it through here in small cars. There's certainly plenty of tickets written for uh, those in question. Right. <laughs> So that is my new Fiat 500 Abarth. Uh, you guys get to come along as I drive 13 hours and 13 minutes or something like that back to Wichita, Kansas. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but first, in the next video, we're gonna hit the tail of the dragon. 
that's gonna be an absolute blast. So make sure you stick around for that. If you've never seen the tail, this will be a great behind the scenes on driving on it and just the fun you can have in a small car and how you don't need to spend a million dollars to go have fun on the road. So thank you guys so much for watching and that is it for today. Please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do and I will talk to you next time. I'm really just distracted because we're out here shooting this and this is like the exit from the tail of the dragon or the beginning of it and just non-stop it's been like Miata 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 Acura TLS uh Skyline uh there was a right hand drive Supra so it just like the cars just keep coming and it's so great you can just stand here and watch awesome cars all day long and I mean the it's just a great place to be look at this we rolled up to the tail and look at that carbon doors carbon hood carbon slider oh you're good that's a Miata with CCWs on it. Those CCWs cost double what the car costs. That's definitely not a V8. <laughs> I know, right?